Okay, I'm Mike Hansen. I'm the state apiarist with the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. I work in the Pesticide and Plant Pest Management Division. Today we're meeting with uh, Don Schramm, who's a beekeeper in southeast Michigan, and his colonies are behind me. Uh, Don operates two bee yards, in, one in southeast Michigan and one up in the Thumb. Uh, in the fall, he moves his bees to the southern states to overwinter, so we do a physical inspection of the colonies for the uh, uh, to issue a health certificate that they're free of certain bee diseases and bee pests. Uh, Don also cooperates with us as Michigan is part of the National Honey Bee Survey. We're sampling 24 yards in the state this summer, collecting both live and uh, preserved samples that will be shipped directly to the USDA laboratory in Beltsville, where they'll be tested for viruses, for uh, different bee diseases, for mites, and especially any uh, species of bees or species of mites that are not known to occur in North America. Uh, it's a partnership we have with the USDA uh, attempting to protect uh, beekeeping in North America from the from uh, integration of bees from countries where they may have other diseases. Okay, Michigan is not a um, heavily regulated state for honeybees. We don't have a honeybee registration as some states do. However, we know we have uh, perhaps 70 large commercial beekeepers, people who make their entire living off of uh, honeybees, and probably several thousand, maybe 2,000 hobbyists or smaller beekeepers, people who have another job and also have an income or at least make a hobby out of beekeeping. In the summer, we believe our population of bees is at or above 150,000 colonies. Uh, we have bees come in from other states to do pollination work. We have a lot of bees we come back from the south uh, in the spring to do pollination work and they, they boost our numbers, as do the activity of beekeepers who split and make new colonies through the summer. In the fall, a good share of our commercial colonies leave Michigan, go to the southern states uh, where beekeepers can manage them in the warmer weather. Uh, they may go to California for pollination and then return in the spring to do our pollination work in Michigan. Michigan beekeepers uh, each winter, a, a good share of our bees head to California. Uh, California has a little over a million acres of almonds that need to be pollinated. They like to get two colonies per acre. Uh, with only two and a half million colonies in the country, that means they take a good half of the bees in the U.S. go to California. Michigan beekeepers do that. They also go south uh, in the winter. They don't generally pollinate in southern crops because beekeepers in their, those states usually have the pollination contracts, but they will put them into orange groves in Florida, which is why a Michigan beekeeper could sell you an orange honey because they're producing that. Uh, Michigan beekeepers do pollinate blueberries uh, in Maine, Mississippi, uh, and, and work with uh, pickle operations both in Michigan and in Florida. So there is some pollination work done in other states, but most of the movement out of the state is so that beekeepers can get their bees strong and ready for pollination in Michigan where at least 60 of our 200 crops in Michigan need honeybee pollination. But beekeepers work very closely with our farmers. They time the time it comes into the, the bees, go into the orchards and vineyards, um, orchards and blueberry fields, and into our vine crops, uh, cucumbers, melons, what have you and they have to get the bees out quickly so, be, so farmers can get back to their spray programs. Um, we produce some of the better quality honeys in the U.S. Uh, some of our northern wildflower honeys are amongst the most sought after in the country. Uh, in Michigan, we're probably ranked seventh to ninth in the amount of honey production compared to other states in the U.S. And today we're doing two rolls. One is uh, Don likes to take his bees south for the winter. Uh, so we're doing an inspection for uh, hive health to make sure we can issue a health certificate. And the other Don is willing to participate in the National Honeybee Survey. So we're going to do uh, take some samples out of his colonies, uh, send them into USDA, and those samples can be used to uh, de help determine the background of honeybee diseases in North America. Uh, and in getting that information, we not only can supply the beekeeper with some information about the health of his colonies, we can get also get a good look at the national health of bees, and the samples will help with such research as the colony collapse disease issue, and will also assist 
uh, USDA making wise decisions in regards to uh, importation of bees from other country permits that are requested. We just started to just give the bees a little bit of smoke down. We do, uh, we do inspection for beekeepers, uh, those that have a lot of colonies and those that have fewer colonies. And sometimes we just find out that the equipment might be a little bit vacant, like this one, this colony, uh, just a very small colony of bees. Um, let's take a quick peek at it, Don. State inspectors are always trained to start on the outside where you would have a tendency to not have the, the, queen, of the queen bee located. We don't want to accidentally roll a queen. Uh, you can see here a little bit of honey that's been uh, stored up uh, for winter for the bees. Loosen these frames up and we can get in. And we can see this is a relatively small swarm. Yeah, if you could see down in here, you can see it was glistening. It's loaded with nectar, uh, preparing for the winter. When we do the survey, we like to find the brood, the baby bees. And there we have honeybee brood, and right here you can see the queen. She's on this frame. Grab her by her wings and she moved in there safely. So now at the survey, what we're gonna do is collect uh, some bees off of this frame uh, to send into the Beltsville Laboratory. That's done first by shaking the adult bees into a pan. Oh, we to have my little scoop. Pocket. Get about a quarter cup of bees into each of these sample units. We'll let the rest of those bees go back in the hive. And part of the survey is a is a tap test. There is a parasitic mite from Asia called the Tropolelops mite. It's very small. If it was existing, it would be on the brood frame. And so just wrapping it. Let us uh, drop those hopefully into the pan. You notice there's a little bit of breakage. What's wonderful about honeybees with wax, they will repair that very quickly. That was the first colony. We looked at the, the brood to make sure it was healthy, um, and it was. There was no, no sign of disease there. And then we took a sample and we repeat. We'll do this eight times. Uh, Mike Hansen, our, BK, our uh, apiary inspector here in Michigan, is uh, very essential to my business. I uh, like to have a bit of a pedigree, and he lets me know with the, with the National Bee Survey uh, the types of bees that I have and the disease levels that uh, all bees carry. Uh, his work is very essential to Michigan beekeeping, and I'm very proud to help him and uh, participate in the survey.